and a growing private sector role in defence. Now, the Akash air defence system developed by DRDO and Bharat Dynamics is already deployed along our sensitive borders. Indigenous radar systems are tracking low altitude threats and for the first time, Indian drones designed and tested by domestic startups, we got some of them on the program just this week, are being positioned for military and surveillance use in real world operations. So we thought, let's take that a step further and joining us next is Nikunj Kampani. He's the advisory board member of the Airpace Industries. Hi, good morning. Nitin, thank you so much. Good morning. For Joining us before you came in, we just had this very inspiring conversation with a retired squadron leader. But let's shift focus to tech now. And we want to understand, you know, how your company, what kind of work are they really doing? First, just tell us a broad overview of what is it that uh, you guys do and th that you're developing. So we at Airpace Industries Limited, we are actually, uh, we have an initiative called uh, Airshield. And we are trying to develop uh, smart drone-based uh, weapon systems, uh, which is completely unmanned. And uh, so we have various uh, versions of that, uh, which is, uh, say, uh, starting from uh, surveillance to recognition to identification of objects uh, from very, say, uh, say very high, uh, high level uh, uh, from, the gr uh, from the ground. So, so it starts with uh, uh, recon, uh, recon systems, then it goes to the loitering immuni uh, munitions, then uh, we are creating drone-based kamikaze drones. So these are the two, three sections that we are uh, aggressively working on right now. So Nikunj, if we could actually ask you to break it down for us. So properly tell us that right from the battlefield, yeah. So right from the drawing board rather, start us there, tell us what does that journey look like. So say there's a new tech that is developed by a private player like you for defence use. How long does it typically take for it to reach from the drawing <coughs> board into the battlefield? What kind of field testing happens? How closely are you typically working with the defence forces? Yeah, so it all begins uh, begins with the ideation, uh, the imagination, basically the uh, selecting the right problem, understanding the right problem statement on the ground, and then aligning the right technology which will address it effectively. So it is uh, it is just about uh, uh, it is not just about building some uh, drone technology and just uh, giving it to them, but it sh it should actually work in the scenario where where it is uh, where the technology is actually needed. So so it's there is a lot of imagination because the we are building up the tech which is not available right. which is which does not exist right mm -hmm. so so there's a lot of imagination is to be done there's some feedback uh, from the uh, from the forces also uh, from the situation that we see around and and we we, we try to imagine a uh, a technology okay this is what uh, we feel that is going to solve the problem uh, of the of our armed forces so the, so it starts from there after that the designing then it uh, then there is an uh, a complete engineering then uh, we we get into the, the procurement of equipments material then there is uh, prototyping is this years no? testing this, this this process that you are discussing is it does it take like 5 years give us uh, a... not 5 years but yes it's an it's an tedious task which takes uh, at least uh, 6 to 12 months okay so, so a lot of it, a lot of time goes in uh, testing. Actually, the field trials and uh, field testing. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of simulations. So basically, there are two type of drones. One is multicopter and one is fixed wing. So multicopter is pretty, uh, you can say, uh, simple in architecture. Uh, so it's very, uh, so a lot of uh, you can you can say a lot of startups and other uh, uh, companies are al already doing a multicopter. But the fixed wing is a real uh, task. So complete, it, it's like an aircraft. So it's a small aircraft, but it but it has all the parameters and all the, the functionalities of an aircraft. So it takes it takes that many fifty uh, almost. I, I was talking to my technical team. Almost fifteen hundred parameters to be calibrated before the flight can be taken off. And then there is a, a lot of fine tuning, multiple avionics working together, integrating together on a software. So we have developed our own indigenous software also, which we call it as AeroS. So it takes care of multiple flights at the same time and say around it can handle around 256 uh, flights in, a, in an instance, uh, it can handle that. And uh, so all the avionics and integration of GPS system, the flight controllers, the, uh, the 
barometers and everything sure. is so integrated mm. closely tightly integrated so it's a very complex technology but yes uh, i i believe uh, india is doing very well in uh, developing drones and the startup ecosystem has flourished like uh, anything in recent years yeah talking about that nikun just on your q1 how india is doing so well it is perhaps to be noted that uh, India has long relied on imports right for critical defense technology but yeah. what changed in the country in the past decade i think or so where we've seen so many private players startups young people we speak on the program with kids who say who were perhaps conceiving this idea when they were in school and now they are a full grown startup now they are you know working with drdo it's a dream really uh, what has changed in the system Yeah, so the most important thing was the accessibility. Uh, basically, whenever there was a startup or, or or maybe an engineer or anybody, they would have never thought of working with the government or defense forces or anything because because they, there was no road to how to reach them. They, access, they were not accessible, and and there was no option uh, where uh, or, or no guidance also. So now in last one decade, I believe uh, there are a lot of policy changes done by the government. There are a lot of uh, uh, say initiatives that have been started by the government, like IDEX is there, Make in India is there. They have completely changed the defense acquisition procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, that uh, the the arms and ammunition or the technology that uh, defense buys. Uh, they have completely changed the procedure. They have been uh, funds uh, specifically. you can say uh, dedicated to startups for technology development and and stuff so so the fund accessibility is there then there is policy change has been done and then government has started believing in the startup ecosystem the indian mm. startup ecosystem mm. they are not like okay we want to get some technology from france or israel or or russia or somewhere uh, or or us they they have started adopting step by step they have uh, not overnight it's not happened overnight but they have started yeah. adopting uh technologies that are home ground and uh, from and and they are actually I, i'm i'm surprised that they are actually implementing it in the warfare and they are they are uh, actually doing trials on that so yeah. there is a good feedback loop also from the forces side a, uh, from the drdo also is very aggressively helping with the problem statements on the ground so there is a good uh, amount of information also available now so, so that makes very easy you touched on it right now india has traditionally been an importer and that has changed with the make in india push over the last few years but just tell our audiences for us to even become an exporter one day and a full blown exporter can you just tell our audiences which niche areas of aerospace or defense tech could give india that edge what are we already developing that you think you know is most easily exportable uh so uh, basically the 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 current startup ecosystem is uh, uh, focused on uh, deep tech ai uh, ai driven uh, softwares tech, uh, and uh, they are also uh, getting deep into the hardware special kind of uh, avionics to be integrated so so i believe the uh, the ai based ecosystem the ai based software so uh, where wherein there is complete uh, unmanned warfare systems that can be deployed on the security borders uh, is the technology which i see everybody is working on and i see that uh, on, on the on the software side of this ecosystem of uh, drones and technology i see that uh, there are hardly any uh, countries who have their own software so uh, now uh, in india we are, we have also developed our own software plus i see that indian startups there are uh, many more who has developed their own software who is so they are they are actually reducing the dependency from the foreign players so so on the hardware side we were we were okay uh, we were good and strong but on the software side we were always dependent on the west so now uh, we are actually getting the software's indigenous and uh, that that makes it i think the strongest point uh, with uh, indian technology that can be exported so it's All it's a right. complete solution it's not an hardware or software but it's a complete integrated <coughs> solution which makes more sense uh, to export we we'll leave it there for the moment thank you anjali thank you so much for joining us and good luck with all your future endeavors uh, uh, keep working at it and keep like we yeah. said taking the drone flag high for india thank you uh, thank you so much good day